Hi, I'm Daniel Edmondson. Welcome to my studio. Today what I want to talk about is how to take a workshop or a class. And that might seem like it's kind of a silly topic for a discussion, but I've done so many workshops over all the years with so many very talented artists. And about halfway through my workshop life, lifetime, I realized how to do it. And you ever notice when you're sitting there working on a painting, the instructor will come up and say, oh, this shoulder's too high, or this eye's too high, or this vase is misshapen. And 90% of what I see in workshops and in classes, what happens is the instructor is correcting drawing problems. They go around from person to person to person, and they correct drawing problems. And sometimes maybe they'll correct a value problem. But that is pretty much it. And I remember one time, and to get the most out of your workshop experience, you don't want that, right? Because you're going to learn drawing on your own eventually. Drawing's kind of a hard thing to learn, and it normally takes a few years for someone to become natural at it. But you're going to learn that on your own anyway. And having someone come along and tell you that the shoulder is too low when you've paid a thousand dollars to go travel somewhere and study with this guy is just not a good use of your money so what you need to do is be a little bit more proactive on that and let me tell you a little interesting story about that one time i was taking a class at the denver art students league down in denver with a very talented artist you know a real good artist and he was doing a demo and he started to do his demo, and I think this was a typical three-hour class. And about an hour into it, I started to notice people started drifting off and going and working on their own paintings, right? And this particular guy wasn't a super dynamic speaker, and he was very immensely talented. So he definitely had a lot of good information. We just, you just had to know how to pull it out of him. So what happens before I knew it, people, more and more people trickle back and start working on their paintings until it was just me by myself watching him do his demo. So I um, saw that as my opportunity. So I asked him important things like, what's your philosophy on color harmonies? And then he'd respond. What was your, what's your philosophy on value structure? And he'd respond, what's your, what's your philosophy on brushwork? How do you think brushwork should be applied? And what's the easiest way to get this brushwork? And so on and so forth. So I've sat there and I asked him all these questions that had nothing to do with drawing. If you want drawing, take a drawing class. But had to do with painting. And that was such a good experience for me. And then I realized that's the way you take workshops. So the next workshop I did, the teacher came around and he said, hey, the shoulder is too high. And you, you know, kind of chuckle and you, and you say, and what you do is you say, oh, that's interesting. Let me ask you a question while you're here. What is your philosophy on color? How do you think a painting should look in terms of color? Should there be one dominant color or multiple hoods of color? And you just ask him what he thinks and he'll tell you and you will get more out of that than you'll ever get out of someone coming along telling you the shoulder's too high or this is a little too dark or this is a little too light. So think about that. Make a list of questions the next time you go to a workshop and those questions would normally address the, the key areas which are color value edges, paint application and drawing as a secondary or the last choice because you get plenty of that on your own and trust me eventually everyone learns drawing okay that's dan edmondson with another tip of the week have a great day and next time you're at a workshop think it out see if you can get more out of it than what you've ever got before have a great day